Along the ivy-covered walls of a college, a hidden chapel rests deep within an ancient forest. Its legend? A choir lost to eternity. Join us for a tantalizing glimpse into the eerie tale of Sam, Ilara, and Micah as they venture into the chapel, guided only by whispers of ethereal hymns. Stay tuned for the spine-tingling journey into the heart of Kettering Hall. If you enjoy this story, don't forget to like and subscribe. The college sat atop a small hill, its gothic architecture imposing against the grey horizon. I was a sophomore, eager to move into the main campus rather than the freshman apartments down the road. I was assigned a room in Kettering Hall, an older, stone-bricked building that carried with it numerous legends. I'd heard the whispers about Kettering. They said it was the original building of the college, over a century old. There were tales of underground tunnels, secret societies, and ghosts of students long past. Of course, I dismissed them as mere college myths. My room, 313, was on the topmost floor. The halls of Kettering were dimly lit, with the old wooden floors creaking underfoot. My room was spacious, with a high ceiling and a large window that overlooked the dense forest surrounding the campus. On my first night, as I was unpacking, there was a soft knock on the door. It was a girl around my age, with jet black hair and piercing blue eyes. Hi, I'm Elara, your next door neighbor, she said with a soft smile. Hey, I'm Sam, I replied, shaking her hand. She looked around my room, her gaze lingering on the window. You know, they say this room is special. It's the only one that has a clear view of the old chapel in the woods. I peered out, and sure enough, deep within the forest, was the silhouette of an old chapel, its spires jutting out between the trees. I've heard about it, I said, but never seen it up close. They say it's been abandoned for decades. Elara nodded. It's been locked up for years. Some say it's haunted. There are stories of students hearing chants and seeing light flickering inside, despite there being no electricity. I laughed. Well, it's a good thing I'm not easily scared. We chatted a bit more, and she left, reminding me to join her and some others for a midnight exploration of the campus. That night, as the clock neared midnight, I decided to pull out a book and read. Just as I was about to dive in, I heard it. A distant, ethereal singing. I strained my ears, trying to discern where it was coming from. The sound was mournful and seemed to be carried by the wind. Curiosity peaked, I moved to the window. Down in the woods, the old chapel seemed different. A faint light glowed within, casting eerie shadows. The singing was clearer now, echoing through the forest. It was as if an unseen choir was lamenting inside the abandoned chapel. Suddenly, my phone buzzed. It was a message from Elara. Do you hear it too? My fingers trembled as I typed. The singing, she replied almost instantly. Yes, it happens occasionally, but tonight it's louder than ever. I gazed back out, feeling an inexplicable pull towards the chapel. And then, in a moment that sent chills down my spine, I saw figures. Shadowy figures roamed the woods, moving silently toward the glowing chapel. Another buzz from my phone broke my trance. Ilara's message read, Meet me in the hallway. We need to see this up close. Heart racing, I grabbed a flashlight, left my room, and stepped into the cold, foreboding corridor of Kettering Hall, wondering what awaited us in the depths of that haunted forest. The hallway was quieter than I remembered, the only sound being the distant, still audible singing that seemed to permeate the walls of Kettering Hall. Ilara stood a few doors down, her face a shade paler than earlier. Beside her was another student, a tall guy with glasses. This is Micah, she introduced. He's a history major and knows more about the chapel than anyone else. Micah extended a hand, his grip firm. Couldn't help but overhear figured you might need some historical context. Together, we made our way down the stairs and out of the building. The singing grew louder as we approached the woods. It was beautiful, haunting, and otherworldly. The chapel was built even before the college, Micah began as we moved cautiously through the dense trees, guided only by our flashlights. 
It was initially a place of worship for the town before the college even existed. There's a legend about a choir that met a tragic end there. Ilara shot him a warning look, as if asking him not to scare us further. But I urged him on, curious despite my fear. What happened to them? Micah hesitated, then continued. It's said that one evening, during a winter storm, the choir gathered to practice for an upcoming event. However, the storm grew wilder, and the chapel was engulfed in snow. By morning, the townspeople found them all frozen to death, their hymns still on their lips. We continued deeper into the woods, the atmosphere growing heavier. Soon, the chapel loomed before us, its architecture a mix of beauty and decay. The light and singing emanated strongly from it now, and the shadowy figures could be seen more clearly, moving around like lost souls. Micah pointed to a symbol engraved above the entrance. It represents unity in voice and spirit. Legend has it that the choir's bond was so strong that even in death they continue singing together. Elara swallowed hard. The doors usually locked. But as she approached, it creaked open slightly, revealing a faint light within. With a collective deep breath, we decided to step inside. The interior was breathtaking. Vines had reclaimed much of the space, and aged frescoes depicted scenes of harmonious gatherings. But most unsettling was the sight before us. Transparent figures, members of a choir, stood in formation, their ethereal forms glowing, singing the mournful hymn that had guided us here. We hid behind a broken pew, watching in awe and terror. It was clear these spirits were trapped in their final act, forever bound to this chapel. Suddenly, the singing grew louder, resonating with an urgency. The figures became more animated, turning towards the chapel's main altar. There, a brighter entity appeared, seemingly conducting the choir. The room grew colder, and our breaths became visible. Micah whispered, it's said that they sing to appease their conductor, waiting for a sign to move on. Just as the climax of their song approached, Elara's flashlight flickered and went out, causing her to let out an involuntary scream. Instantly, every spectral head turned toward us, their eyes hollow but focused, the singing replaced by an eerie silence. The conductor figure pointed a translucent finger in our direction, and the choir began to move toward us their mouths now open in silent screams. Panicking, we scrambled to our feet, rushing towards the exit. As we spilled out of the chapel, the forest seemed even more oppressive, the trees closing in, but the once clear path we had taken was now obscured. We need to stick together, Micah shouted, pulling us along. As we ran, the distant wails of the ghostly choir echoed behind us, a haunting reminder of the supernatural enigma we had just witnessed. With Kettering Hall finally in sight, we didn't stop until we were safely back inside, the heavy doors of the dormitory slamming shut behind us. Our breaths were ragged, our minds trying to process the otherworldly experience we'd just shared. We gathered in my room, the only place we felt even remotely safe. Elara sat on the edge of my bed, her usual confidence replaced by vulnerability. Micah, although trying to maintain composure, kept glancing nervously towards the window. The chapel, once a distant silhouette, now felt eerily close. Micah broke the silence. The choir, their conductor, the legends never mentioned them being malevolent. Ilara shuddered. Maybe they weren't. Maybe we disturbed them or maybe they just wanted to be seen, to have their story acknowledged. We discussed into the early hours, searching for explanations. Micah, digging through his extensive notes, found an old journal entry about the chapel. It's from the diary of a former dean, he said. It mentions the tragic event, but there's more. He cleared his throat and began reading. January 8th, 1912. The storm has claimed many, none more tragic than our beloved choir. Their devotion was unparalleled, often practicing in the harshest conditions. But rumors swirl about their final evening. They say the conductor, in his desire for the perfect performance, kept them there, disregarding the storm outside. 
By dawn, when the townsfolk broke through the snowed-in doors, they found them lifeless. It's said that their final song is etched in the walls, a reminder of their dedication and the cruel hand of fate that befell them. We exchanged uneasy glances. The conductor, instead of a guiding spirit, was perhaps the reason they remained trapped. Dawn broke, casting a faint light through my window. We were exhausted, but decided we couldn't let the story end there. The spirits needed release. Equipped with Micah's historical knowledge and guided by determination, we returned to the chapel later that day. With the sunlight filtering in, it seemed less menacing. We approached the altar, where Micah had found a hidden compartment in his previous explorations. Inside was an old baton, believed to belong to the conductor. Micah spoke. Legends say that relinquishing the baton, a symbol of his control, can set them free. With bated breath, we placed the baton on the altar and stepped back. For a moment, nothing. Then, a soft humming filled the air, growing into the familiar hymn. But this time, it wasn't mournful, but hopeful. Before our eyes, the ghostly figures reappeared, including the conductor. However, he was no longer leading them, but standing among them, as if he was finally one with his choir. Their song grew in strength, culminating in a harmonious crescendo. And then, like wisps of smoke carried away by the wind, they began to fade, leaving the chapel in serene silence. The weight that had settled over the woods seemed to lift, the air fresher, lighter. We exited the chapel, the heavy burden of the previous night replaced with a feeling of accomplishment. Back at Kettering Hall, life resumed its usual pace, but the legend of the chapel took on a new tone. It became a story not of perpetual haunting, but of redemption and freedom. And while the nights remained silent, every so often, on a particularly still evening, students claimed to hear faint singing from the woods, a harmonious hymn of gratitude from spirits finally at peace.